time to finish off the AI that we've started making. We've already made functionality for it to patrol around, and then when we get close enough to start chasing us around. Today we're going to be adding in all the animation related code. We're going to be adding in its walking animation, and then also a attacking animation. So let's go into our enemy here and add a new component, and we're going to be adding a animator component. We'll need to have a animator controller and an animator avatar, which we have neither of those. So let's make them. So when we select our enemy, we can go up here into rig and we can say our avatar definition is going to be created from this model. We could also say we want a legacy or a humanoid animation type here. If you have a humanoid character, which has similar armatures to other humanoid characters in your game, this can allow you to use the same animations on different objects, which can be really, really useful. It's not going to be the case for this specific object because it's got this weird ass horns and stuff, which are all animated. So uh, we're going to stick with generic here. And then we're just going to apply, which that will start making us a new avatar. So now when we come down into the animator here, we can select the basic demon avatar. So it will know which avatar to use to drive the skeletal animation. Making the actual animation controller is a lot easier. We can just come up here and create animation controller, which we will just call demon for now. If we double click that, we'll get our animator window opened up, which for the time being, I will keep docked over here. Now that that's been made, we can change our animator controller to the one we've just made for our demon. And we can even double click that now to open up the graph that we have here. This project file, which will be in the link down below in the description to my Patreon, comes with all the enemy uh, animations that you'll ever need. A walking animation, attacking animation, a knockback animation, which we're not going to be using in this mini series, but we will be using in a later one. And even idle animation if you want to program in a, uh, a idle state. For now though, we're just going to drag in the walking animation because this thing will always either be walking or attacking. So by dragging that into an empty graph, that's being set to our default state. You do want to come up here though and check in your FBX that you've imported. If you go into the animations tab up here, we have our walking animation and we should make sure that loop time is enabled for this one because that's an animation that's going to be looping. If you want to use the idle animation, that's also an animation that's going to require being able to loop. Now when we play the game, we can see our enemy is actually walking around. The animation speed itself, you might want to change about a little bit to match the walking speed of your nav mesh agents, as well as maybe changing the angular speed of your nav mesh agent to something higher so that it can turn around a bit quicker. But that's all fine tuning. That's really up to you. That's not really what this tutorial is about. But as you can see, uh, this already feels quite a bit better by just changing that one number. And suddenly we have gone from a sliding T posing weird ass to actually somewhat threatening feeling enemy. So let's actually get into the code because that's what you're watching this tutorial for probably is the code that will drive the actual attacking. So let's open up our enemy AI patrolling script, which has all of our functionality already programmed in for either patrolling, chasing, or attacking. If you're unfamiliar with what's going on here, or if you don't care, you can just skip this. If you do want to see, go check the last video or even the last two videos. For now, we only are going to fill out the code in our attacking function. For that though, we're going to need a reference to a animator. We'll call that just animator because that's the easiest thing to do. In our start function, we'll give animator a value of get component animator, and we'll go into the animator and in the animator we'll set a trigger and that trigger will just call attack keep in mind i'm using a capital a here you can use all lowercase but this is case sensitive we'll also set our agent destination to our current transform position so that it stops walking and then we're gonna go back into our animator here because here in parameters we're going to make a new trigger and we're going to call that trigger attack now we can just use the attacking animation that comes in the fbx but we're actually going to want to change that animation and fbx's can only be read not written to so what we're actually going to do instead we can just select and by pressing ctrl d 
it'll make a duplicate of that outside of the FBX. This one we can actually add it later on. We want to do this because we want to add a couple of flags into this animation, which will enable and disable the hitbox for the actual attack. So we'll use this one instead, drag it in, and then we can just simply, from our enemy walking, we can make a transition by right-clicking and then to our enemy attack. And then from our enemy attack, we make a transition to the exit of our graph. So we can actually just put it in here and make it a little bit more streamlined. Now we're going to have to tell this state machine, which is what this is called, when it's supposed to go from the walking animation to the attacking animation and when it's going to go from the attacking animation to the exit. Let's go for that last one first. So we can click on this transition here and it has exit time enabled by default. We can go into the settings here. It's got a fixed duration. We're going to set that to zero so that it has the exit time at the very end of our animation. By default, exit time here is set to the last frame of your animation. This way, it'll leave the state machine and re-enter from the start the moment the attacking animation is finished. Now, going from enemy walking to enemy attacking, we select that transition. We disable has exit time because we don't want to wait for the enemy walking animation to finish before it can start attacking. So we disable that altogether. And instead, we're going to come down here to conditions. This list right now is empty. We can add a condition and that's just going to be the attack trigger that we made before. So when that attack trigger is set to being triggered, true, it will go through here. Since it's a trigger, it'll automatically turn itself off. It'll do the attack, it'll exit and it'll come back to enemy walking. Then if we're still in range, it'll set the trigger again and it'll attack again and otherwise it'll just walk about again. Except that's not quite what's going to happen. We're going to do a little bit more refining here in order to figure out what's going on and i'm going to show you what happens if you just do this because this works but it's not perfect so as you can see when he gets close to us the trigger enables he attacks and as long as we are close enough he will keep attacking us but now that we walk away he does one last attack before he starts chasing us down again and that's not exactly what we want is it and that is because when we it's setting this trigger even though it's already in the enemy attack which we don't want to do so coming back to our code real quick we can put in an if statement and we'll check if animator dot gets current animator state info so that's the last one down here and we'll get a uh, layer zero because you can have multiple layers dot is name and then we can give it a name so it's going to check for the name of the animation currently playing that name is enemy underscore attack which we can just easily copy out of here to avoid making mistakes just paste that in there if we do that check before executing this code and we put a explanation point before this so it's checking for it not not being this specific attack animation. Now it will only set that trigger to being true if it's playing the walking animation or if we have a idle animation or something like that, it'll also allow it to do that. In order to avoid any weirdness as well, we want to get the transition between the walking and the enemy attack animation and set that transition duration to zero as well. This will get rid of the blending of the animations, which is something really nice that Unity does in 3D animation, is it can blend together animations in transition which is rather nice it also takes up valuable time in your gameplay and make things feel a little less snappy a lot of the time so do be aware of that we're going to set the transition to being uh, zero seconds long so that the transition is instantaneous there's no blending going on here as you can see it'll instantly start doing the attacking animation and yeah it's a little bad at looping but now you can see if we leave in the middle of it doing an attack it won't do another attack before it starts chasing us again which is really really nice what you can do instead as well is instead of going through the exit we can also make a transition back to the walking animation because we've got such a simple animation graph and that will allow the end of the animation to blend more into the start of the walking again which is quite nice indeed so we've got exit time and the transition duration here is 0.25 seconds that's all good and now you'll see we've got the attacking animation which is a lot smoother now and when we walk away from that it is a lot smoother going back into the walking animation this is the arm that's doing the attack so we're going to go into our basic demon here and then demon enemy bone and we're going to find the bone that holds the arms so i think that's one of these ones and then all the way down this is the last bone of this arm 
So there we're going to make a new object and just be an empty object. We'll give it a uh, purple label so that we can keep track of it. And in there, we're going to add a box collider. It's going to be rather massive at first. So let's set the size to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And then just edit this collider to fit around the hand of your enemy. The smaller this collider is, obviously, the easier it's going to be to avoid the attacks. So don't be afraid to make it a little little bigger than the actual hand itself. Not too much because that'll end up with players thinking that the game is unfair, but something like this should be quite good. And we're going to enable is trigger. Now, back in our enemy air patrol script, we're going to start coding for that collision trigger. First, we are going to need a reference to that specific box collider. So we'll make a box collider variable and give it the value of not get component because it's going to be not actually on this game object every single bone is seen as its own game object so we'll get component in children instead it's going to look through all the child objects of this object and try to find a box collider to give value to this variable now if you have multiple box colliders in your hierarchy you might need to manually set this value as being a specific one of those box colliders we don't so we can just find it through get component in children and then down at the bottom of our script we're going to make a couple new functions first is void enable attack which will set our box collider enabled to being true and then we're also going to make a void disable attack which as you might be able to come to a conclusion here will set box collider enabled to being false with this one just a quick and easy way to get our box collider turning on and off so that we don't have the enemy being able to actually damage us unless it's in a specific portion of its attacking animation. And then we'll also add a on trigger enter where we'll make a variable for the player which will be equal to other dot get components and since we have a player movement component we can just check whether or not thing that we're colliding with has a player movement component in which case it's the player add brackets after that to make it a function and then we can just check if player is not equal to null so if we're colliding with let's say a wall it's not going to have a player movement component so the value of player here is going to be null and we don't want anything to happen but if it's not equal to null that means it's gotten a value which means that we are in in fact colliding with the player uh, for now we'll just print hit because again we don't have a hit point system or anything like that usually this is where you would go into your player's hp and lower it and maybe add a little bit of knockback or anything like that but that's beyond what we're doing here today so do feel free to add in whatever code you want into this part back in the unity editor itself we're going to actually by default disable the box collider here it should only be enabled during the actual animation which is what we're going to do now so in our attack and Animation, which is why we made a separate animation for this rather than just using the one in the FBX. If we double click that, we open up our animation window over here. Now it's a little bit iffy to figure out where in the animation we need to enable and disable the hitbox because we can't see a preview. By all accounts, it should display a preview here. It doesn't. For this case, let's say that about 25 frames in, we want to enable and at 48 frames, we want to disable. So what we can do is up here in enemy attack this little icon we can add an event and then at 48 frames we can also add an event and here we need to pass in the exact same names that we have for these functions so at the first event we're going to enable attack and then at the second function or event or rather at the second event we're going to disable attack and that's everything there is to it now when this animation runs it'll try to find a function called disable attack on one of the scripts attached to the object that is doing this animation. So in this case, this object is doing the animation attack. It has a enemy AI patrol script, which has functions named enable and disable attack. Now, just for the sake of us not having a particularly big player hitbox, we should probably make this collider just a tiny bit bigger, just so that we have a higher likelihood of getting hit by it. And in order for this trigger box to actually function, it is likely that your enemy is going to need a rigid body as well. We're not going to do anything too much with this, uh, but it needs a rigid body in order to understand collision events. So now when we go see what our enemy is up to, when we get close to him, the moment he attacks us, we can see 
we get a notification that we are getting hits. It's a little inconsistent at the moment because of the way he doesn't stop far enough away from us, but that is literally just a matter of going into our enemy patrol and setting our attack range to something like five. It's a little bit of fine tuning. Again, it very much depends on your specific game and your specific needs. Same with what actually happens when you get hit by an attack. Are we playing a game that's instant kill? Do you have an HP system? That's altogether a little bit too much in detail for me to be able to really get into right here right now and as you can see there's quite a bit more that you can do because right now if we start walking away in the middle of an attack there is a good chance that he will start moving before the walking animation starts again so you might want to build in some checks for the movement if there's an attack being done or not so check whether or not the attack animation is being run if so always set our destination location current location that's all kind of polish that i'm not going to get into right now these are the basic ideas for the system we've got our basic enemy ai and from here i'm sure that you can figure out things on your own and if not there's plenty more tutorials to come using similar techniques to what we're doing here i'm also going to get into making a combat system for your actual player character but that's future stuff for now if you want to look around my code get these models to work with there's also a player model in here because of the mini series that's going to come after this which is the player combat system if you want to look around with that have a bit of a experimentation with my stuff there's a link down below in the description to the project file as it is right now so you can either compare your own code to my code maybe use my assets to experiment and play around with they're not game ready assets by any means they are prototyping assets for my own game do feel free to use them for your own practice and i'll see you back in the next video